center, the Brooklyn Nets at two and two here in the summer, taking on the Boston Celtics at three and one. So the fans making their way into the arena. We're on the main court here today for the last game for both the Nets and the Celtics. What's up, everybody? Welcome courtside alongside former WNBA coach and player. She's Stephanie White. I'm John Trippin. Monica McNutt will join us momentarily. All right, let's start here with the Brooklyn Nets because the Brooklyn Nets have a lot of second-year guys, and really it's Cam Thomas who has just been so good this summer, really last summer as well. Yeah, he's been terrific. I mean, the, last year, the co-MVP of the Summer League, He's a bucket getter. I mean, that is exactly what he does. He goes out, he finds ways to score the basketball, has not shot the ball from three particularly well, but finding ways to score at all other levels. Last time we saw these teams, it was first round of the NBA playoffs. Take a look back at what happened between the Celtics and the Brooklyn Nets. Jason Tatum in game one with the clock winding down. They'll find him in a second. Here he is with the buzzer beater. Celtics took game one. They would go on to win that series. So we got a little rematch of sorts. Some of those guys played for the Nets. How about that game one winner right there? Set the tone for that series. Brooklyn, a disappointing and frustrating season, culminating with that 4-0 sweep. All right, so let's set up this game. The Nets come in here at 2-2. Two and two. We talked about Cam Thomas, who has just been a bucket getter for the Nets. Ton of second year guys. It's been important for them to have their next step and grow this summer with the Nets. It is having that growth from from one summer and one year of experience to the next coming out and showing that experience in a, in a variety of ways, taking your game to another level. So Cam Thomas, he leads the summer league averaging 28 points per game. He is looking to get another win. As the Nets are two and two so far this summer. And Cam Thomas, I mean, he can just do it from everywhere on the floor. He can. He elevates on that jump shot. He can score from three, taking it off the bounce. I mean, this is a guy who can create his own shot at will. And I think the next step for him is understanding how to make other players better. As for the Celtics, they come in here at three and one. They've been really good this summer. They have been led by Fiondu Kevin Gelly. A first-round draft pick in 2019, trying to make his way back into the NBA. Well, this is a guy who has a great opportunity, making a push for one of those open roster spots on, on the Celtics. He's been active on the glass, solid on the defensive end, and he's been a force, a consistent force inside offensively. Hey, he's been fun to watch. I mean, every time he touches the ball, we are looking for a highlight out of Fiondu Cavangeli. Take a look at the starting lineups for the Nets. David Duke Jr., Cam Thomas, Kessler Edwards, Raekwon Gray, and Dayron Sharp. A lot of familiar names for Nets fans for the Celtics. J.D. Davison has been really good. The second round draft pick out of Alabama. Justin Jackson trying to make his way back into the NBA from North Carolina. As Fiondu Kevin Galley and Dayron Sharp jump it up. And the Nets wearing the road black win the tip. We play 10 minute quarters here in the Summer League. Each team gets to play five games. So this is the last game of the summer for the Nets and the Celtics. Stephanie, you want to leave Vegas on a winning note. You certainly do. Doesn't everybody want to leave Vegas on a winning note? Yeah, not many do though. J.D. Davison will bring up the ball for the Celtics. He has been really good this summer. Second round draft pick, 53rd overall. Here he is with a floater off the rim. Sharp pulls it down. He's so good in the open court. When he can get downhill, create his own shot. A little surprised he fell that far. He is opening some eyes so far this summer. He's been impressive. Out ahead of the pack. At the rim, throwing it down. That's Zuan Begarin. A 2021 second round pick out of Paris. He's just 19 years old. Now that's something we talked about Cam Thomas working on this summer. First summer it was all about scoring. This time, oh, get that out of here. Kevin Galley with the block, but he's more of a distributor this second time around in the summer. And I think that's what you want to see. You want to see growth in the game. The game slows down a little bit. So when teams are playing you for that scoring role, can you find your open teammates? The Garen cut off will take a long two, and he swishes it. So the first two buckets of the game for Boston come from Zuon to Garen. Here's Cam Thomas. That's what he does. First shot off the mark. Justin Jackson playing a two-man game with Fiondu Cavangeli. Throwing it up at the rim. That it out of bounds. Nets ball.
Oh, getting out in transition, getting an easy two, and then watch the body control. Oh, not coming with that second with that second replay. But he, he's been really good. I love his story, how this Boston Celtics staff watched film virtually with him in the offseason when he was playing overseas, really helping him understand the nuances of the NBA game. There's Ke uh, Kessler Edwards, the second-year pro at a Pepperdine. He gets so much elevation on that he jump sure shot. Does. Kevin Gelly trying to show his range. Man, he has done a little of everything for the Celtics this summer. And that's what you want to see, the ability to stretch the defense from that forward position. And again, you know, talk about an opportunity for him to get into that third or fourth post rotation. He's taking advantage of it. Yeah, I knew Kevin Gelly is 6'10", 250. This is Davison from the corner, and he knocks down the triple. The Boston Celtics coming out hot. They're up 10-2 here early on in the first quarter. Celtics shooting 67% from the floor, a perfect two of two from beyond the arc. Thomas, float game, off the mark, on the board is Sharp. And there's Kevin Galley fighting with it. They're gonna say Celtics ball. I've seen a lot of Fiondu Kevin Galley. He played in the G League with the Rio uh, Grand Valley Vipers. He actually won the G League championship this past season. And he's always been known as an energy guy, right? You always see him around the rim. He's always active. But seeing him step out and including that three-point shot in his arsenal, that's got to open some eyes in terms of getting back to the NBA. Well, certainly. You, you want to be a threat. you got to be a threat when you roll into the rim. you got to be a threat when you can stretch the defense. His activity level, his ability to rebound the basketball always keeps him in the conversation. Growth on the offensive end is that next step. Pray. Ooh, take to the rack. He's got two. It is 10-4 lead for the Celtics here in this first quarter. Davison dump off. Cavagelli couldn't handle the pass. Here come the Nets. No. Davison poked it away. And underneath, Cavagelli with the easy jam. That first pass, that's one of those growth processes, right, for J.D. Davidson using that pocket bounce pass. Give it to him in a position he can catch. Davidson came in off, coming off a monster game on Thursday. 28 points, 10 assists, 5 rebounds, and 3 steals. Edwards thought about it. Dump off sharp is hacked on the arm. He'll go to the free throw line to shoot two. With all the talk about what's going on with the Nets, the big club in terms of who's staying and who's going, this summer has been important for Brooklyn because you got a lot of second-year guys playing together, working on some things, looking to grow their game here in Vegas. You, uh, you never know what the roster's going to look like. You know, you, you, you never know. When you have an opportunity, these guys, a lot of these guys got experience last year playing with the big club. They understand what it takes, and now is their opportunity to expand their game, look to make an impact to get a bigger role Understand what it takes to be successful. Kaiser Gates checking in for the first time for the Nets. 12-6, Boston leads here under six minutes to play here in this first quarter. This is Big Garin. Dale's another jumper. He has come out red hot, hit his first three shots. He's got seven points. He's been good. He's been consistent. Averaging 16 and a half points, shooting at 47% from the floor. He looks really comfortable. And he's young. Yes. Just 19 years old. Duke Jr. misses everything. Sharp is active, and he'll lay it in with the left. And then Sharp pokes it away. Thinks he has it, but it's going to stay with the Celtics. Well, Bagarin is showing how comfortable he is in that offensive system. Smooth stroke from the three. NBA 2K23 Summer League is presented by NBA. That's John Schriffen alongside Stephanie White and Monica McNutt. All right, Stephanie, so you played in the WNBA. You coach in the WNBA. You know the importance of putting together a roster. Tell me about this time in the summer and what it means for young guys trying to make the big league clubs. Well, it, it means a lot. I mean, certainly guys who have been here before, you want to see growth from one summer to, to the next summer. You, you want to see opportunities. You also want to see efficiency. Right, like a lot of these guys, if they're going up to a big club, they're going to play a role if they're going to get to play at all. Right, so you want to see them able to be efficient in small amounts of time. Can you help your ball club if you don't have the ball in your hands? How hard are you playing? How are you competing? Especially on a day like today, you're playing game five. How are you still competing in these matchups? 
That's a good point, because you, you can see a lot of the executives that left. Oh, rocking the rim. Good jam by Raekwon Gray, the rookie out of Florida State. And they've left, but they're watching, right? They, they, they've left, they're watching, they want to see how these guys are competing, they want to see what they're doing in these moments. As Dawkins in the corner, this is his first shot, tipped out, and over the back is going to be called on Travion Williams. This is day 10. We've been here a while. Let's take another look at this dunk by Gray. <laughs> what a take. The Ole defense by Travion Williams gets by, no weak side, throws it down. I apologize, called him a rookie. He's a second round pick last year. A lot of second round, second year guys who are second round picks for the Nets. Getting some time. Checking in for the first time is Alondis Williams. Coming out of Wake Forest. He is a rookie, undrafted ACC player of the year. Think about that, an ACC player of the year goes undrafted. Unbelievable, right? McGarren to the rack. And a goal will be called on Gray. Count the bucket. You know, it really just shows how tough it is. Right? How tough it is. There are so few spots, so few opportunities. It was tough for Alondis Williams down the stretch at Wake mm -hmm. Forest because I had him in the NIT and he was telling me he was dealing with kind of a turf toe and kind of a nagging injury down the, the stretch of the season. So he wasn't able to perform up to the way he wanted to in the playoffs, but he did some body of work in the ACC and he was impressive. Camp Thomas rising up for the bucket. For Thomas, that is his first field goal today. Backdoor cut, Jackson will be fouled. That'll go against Kaiser Gates out of Xavier. It also goes to show you it depends on what system you're put in, mm -hmm. right? Like That's in right. the Summer League here, if you don't go drafted, you have the opportunity to pick a team and your agent can kind of finagle where the best opportunity might be for you because depending on your game, you got to figure out what the team needs. Yeah, and, and that's such a good point. Sometimes it's not always when you're drafted, but it's where you're drafted. Do, do, you, do you feel a need, number one? Number two, do, does the system fit your game? You know, and that's all of these scouts, all these guys out there looking and evaluating, making sure that they don't miss. Alondis Williams misses his first three attempt there. Celtics with a eight-point lead here as we approach three minutes to play in the first. Strong take. Put back, Travion Williams. And Adam Caporn, the Summer League head coach for the Nets, will call a timeout on the floor. It has been all Celtics early on, a 10-point lead. They'll be back to Vegas. And on Toronto, that's at 4 o'clock Eastern. Then Oklahoma City, New Orleans is at 6. And Denver and Utah rounding out the night at 8 p.m. Eastern. We talked about how this is late here in the summer. This is the fifth and final game for both these teams. We're also seeing some late scratches, which means a lot of guys are going to get more minutes for the Nets. Noah Kirkworth, the rookie out of... Oh, my goodness! Are you serious, David Duke? What a I don't know what I was just saying. I don't care. I, I don't remember either. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. Over the top. Whoa. Make a statement. <laughs> I don't get the crowd buzzing here, Thomas and Mack. And David Duke Jr. is another guy who has played incredibly well. Jackson short on that three. Scoring the ball, facilitating, shooting it at a high clip. There he is on a nice entry pass as Sharp, sharp rocks the rim. So out of the timeout, looks like the Nets have a little more life. Down by six now. Jackson has that one stripped away. And, oh, well, they're going to say Nets ball. Okay. I mean, just watch getting downhill off of the handoff. The help comes late over the top. What a finish. And that was on Cabagelli. <laughs> I mean, that's a shot block he went out right there. And then the good find in transition. Willens to the rack. Can't get it to fall, but he will go to the line. I mean, you can just see how explosive Alondis Williams is. He just terrorized the ACC this past season. I saw Alondis Williams at the slam dunk contest at the Final Four. He is explosive. He can get up. Alondis Williams. 
So Williams at the line to shoot two as he makes the first. Now he did sign a two-way contract with the Nets, so he'll be part of their G League affiliate and potentially get some time with the big club as well. And that is so huge for these players because just playing in the G League, just the salary difference alone is huge once you step on an NBA court. Well, I think we've seen, you know, especially last year, but with the COVID issues and guys in and out, opportunities are there for, for young guys in the G League to come up, to get minutes, to be a part of the big club. Travion Williams backing his man down, doesn't get the shot to fall. Under two minutes to play here in this fourth quarter, a four-point lead for the Celtics. Edwards rising up. That is a sweet-looking stroke. And you could see that in rhythm. He knew as soon as he got it, it was going up. It was a 10-point lead when the Nets called timeout. It is just a one-point game now. Well, you have an opportunity to remind your team you're the more experienced group, right? You're not playing with enough energy, enough toughness, and they've come out and they've answered the call. Step back three, Dawkins off the mark. Tipped out by Donovan Williams. He's the local product out of UNLV. He finds Kessler on the break. No good. Tipped around. Here come the Celtics. They got numbers. Three on two. Dawkins at the rack. It is back and forth action now. Here comes Alondis Williams, and he will lay it in. And the Nets, they take a one-point lead. They're on an 11-0 run coming out of that timeout. Better job defensively, more active. Getting out in passing lanes, pressuring the basketball, and that leads to this transition. Very good when they can get in the open floor. Under a minute to play here in this first quarter. This is Bone. Jordan Bone out of Tennessee. 2019 second round pick misses his first shot. Jordan Bone, a part of that great Tennessee team that had Grant Williams, Admiral Schofield. Rick Barnes had a good squad. Really good team. Tennessee keeps putting out good teams. They sure do. So for Brooklyn, their first lead of the game, trying to get a two-for-one. Here's Camp Thomas going hard, can't finish. Kevin Galley will pull down the rebound. Slow start for the Nets, but they picked it up. A three-second differential between shot clock and game clock. In the corner, this is Reeves. Tipped around. Nets have it with four seconds on the clock. Donovan Williams is calling for it. And a little misconnection. Miscommunication. That's how the first quarter will end. Brooklyn Nets end the quarter on an 11-0 run. They take a one-point lead at the end. Dayron, you guys went on a run in the second part of that first quarter. What was that inspired by? Um, you know, basketball, a game of runs. So they had a run, you know, it was our turn, you know, just stay together. When teams like, um, going on runs against you, just stay together, keep fighting, playing hard, you always will come back. When David went up and dunked, uh, what did you think? I seen it coming. I knew he was going to dunk. But I see, I just seen bro play before too, though. So when he's done, I'm like, nah, it's my assist. So I like that. Thanks, Dayron. Good luck. Thank you. All right, Monica, good stuff. Welcome back. John Tripp and Stephanie White alongside Monica McNutt. Start of the second quarter here as Boston nails a three. That was Justin Jackson. The Nets trailed by 10 with three minutes left in that first quarter. They called the timeout, and they went on an 11-0 run. Now here's McGarren going one on two and one. Nice finish with the left for the youngster from Paris. He's been impressive. He's been impressive in the open floor. Knocking down pull-ups. Look at the body control. He stays on balance. He's able to finish in traffic and get the end one. Begarin is a perfect five of five from the floor. He's got 11 points now, and he's going to the line to try to convert the three-point play. From what you've seen early on for Begarin, is he a guy who can contribute at an NBA level? You know, look, you, you think about Begarin initially as probably when he was drafted, the, the, the draft and stash, yep. right? And, yep. and, and the improvement, I think the commitment that he's made to this staff and really studying film and growing his game, you know, I, I think you want to continue to see his, his improvement. But for a young guy, he's incredibly poised, controlled, great body control. Spacing there, too. We know exactly when to fill the lang, hung in the air, and it's another trip to the free throw line. So McGarren leaves all scores right now with 12 points as he goes to the free throw line to shoot two. Up, 
Junior NBA Leagues is a new national network of youth basketball leagues that will tip off across the country starting in November. Now, the leagues will enhance recreational basketball while bringing the excitement of the NBA and WNBA to youth players. Learn more at JuniorNBALeagues.com. That's another cool thing about this Summer League event. You see so many young kids getting such close access to their favorite players. And maybe, you know, normally like, there's no professional team here in Vegas. You have WNBA, no NBA team. So for them, youngsters, I mean, this is an amazing experience the last 10 days. Monica and I were just talking about that. We were talking about maybe an opportunity to bring WNBA All-Star here and the interaction with all of the young fans. Mm -hmm. I mean, so important for, for young players to not just see their favorite players, but to see what does it take to fulfill your dreams? It, it takes the work, it takes the grind. You get to enjoy this in a, in a more intimate environment. And it shows you that Vegas loves basketball. Yes. I mean, they support the Aces to get a good crowd all the time at Mandalay Bay. They need an NBA team to come here soon. Basketball fans. Certainly you see people with their favorite teams that they're wearing, but overall just great basketball fans. So the Celtics started this quarter on an 8-0 run. It was just ended. And the Celtics have a 5-0 lead. You see a lot of Lakers fans there always in the house. That's also because the Lakers are up next. The Lakers will be playing here against the Dallas Mavericks. Dump off. Couldn't, didn't see it. Here's Cam Thomas. Here's Tajay Moore. Another good outlet pass. This is Duke off the mark. Good rebound there by Justin Jackson. Shot didn't go in, but that was really good ball movement. It's, it's one of the few times we've seen the ball get side to side for Brooklyn. Why is it so important to get side to side? I mean, the defenders are so good. Oh, oh Kevin Kelly. What a, what a play. That's what he does. Yes, and a great feed. I'm out on the floor, Cabin Gelly going to work. Hey yo! All Celtics, a 10 2 run to start this second quarter as the Celtics have a 32 25 lead as the Nets will bring it up. There's Sharp setting the high ball screen. Thomas going hard, stops on a dime, pull-up jumper. That is so hard to defend. It is, it is. And when they run that screen, the screener action coming off of the flare. Jordan Bowen did a good job of recovering and getting there, but you really have to get into Thomas's space because he elevates. Bowen threw it up for Cabin Gelly in traffic. Oh, that is a man's dunk right there. And how about the, the patience and the poise to take the little head and shoulder fake? Cabin Kelly waited for all the traffic to clear, and he said, yeah, let me do this on you guys. Mm -hmm. And that's a growth process. When you're young, you want it to come fast, come quickly. The game slows down a little bit. Wait for everybody to get out of the way. Boom, driving hard to the rack off the rim. There's Tajay Moore coming out of Houston. Thomas. Duke going hard. Now, earlier, probably last summer, Thomas would have taken that initial three. Mm -hmm. But now he's looking to get all of his teammates involved more. And you can see that it's all team basketball this second summer go around. And that's that next level. That's that next level. We saw early in the ball game for Brooklyn, everybody kind of trying to do it on their own. Now seven assists on 12 made field goals, doing a very good job of sharing the basketball. As a former coach, you probably love that. That's my favorite stat right there. <laughs> assists to made field goals. <laughs> David Duke, he keeps going hard, gets the and one. <laughs> David Duke Jr., 2021, went undrafted out of Providence on a two-way deal, played in 22 NBA games with the Nets, and was pretty efficient from beyond the arc, shot 42.3%, so he shows that he can shoot it. And now here in Vegas, he is showing he could take it to the rim hard. He's got such a high motor, really good energy player. His ability to get downhill. Duke right now has got seven points to go along with his three assists. And Davis pressure is D. trapped. Yeah, he's forced the turnover. What are you noticing different out of the Nets? They started off really slow, but they kind of changed gears. 
their energy level. I mean, their intensity picked it up on the defensive end. It's allowed them to get in the open floor, get out in the break, push pace. And now they're sharing the basketball more in the half court, getting it side to side, finding the best shot on the floor. Thomas goes over two screens in the paint. Finds Gray filling the lane with the left. Thomas, another assist. And that was a great find. He's drawing multiple defenders. He had an eye on the trail man the entire time. It really is fun to watch because you can tell there's so many shots that he could easily mm -hmm. take and that he's passing up. And you can see he's more intentional. He's putting the ball on the floor at a different pace. He's more intentional. His eyes are searching for his open teammates. Travion Williams finishing in traffic. Williams is a guy who really impressed me at the Chicago Draft Combine. It's for his size at 6'10", he can really pass the ball in the post. He's a terrific passer. He's an improved ball handler. Davidson one on three, pick out to Jackson. Bang, bang. Speaking of assist to made field goals, Boston <laughs> does it the best, right? 12 on 15, you see it in their big club, the way they share the basketball, multiple guys getting a touch. This is high level basketball we're watching right yes, now. Yes, it is. Sharp turns and faces. High off the window, no good. Extra pass in the corner. Nothing but net for A.J. Reeves. Dude, he gets downhill so quick, and you can tell the defenders just backpedaling, no chance. And, and you can see him gaining his momentum, the angle that he takes right off the defender's hip. Davison, crossover, gets to his spot, too strong. Williams keeps it alive. He is hacked and will go to the line. And Travion Williams is so good at that. Uses his body so well. Understands, has a great feel for the ball on the board. When you think about a guy like Travion Williams, when you're talking about a, finding a, a guy who can play his role, right? A starter at Purdue. Asked to come off the bench this year. Zach Eady playing in, in, in the paint, starting in the paint. And Travion Williams plays his role to the best of his ability and, and makes an impact. Where do you see his game translating at the next level? Yeah, I, th I think he's gotta he's gotta improve his perimeter defensive skills. You know he's he's too small really to, to defend a five. You know he can use his size and play in small bouts. Um, he's got he's really gotta work defending the perimeter. Offensively he's a terrific passer. He's a better ball handler. But he's played a lot with his back to the basket, and I, and I don't see that being his, his game at the next level. Yeah, a lot of NBA game is going away from the traditional big man. Here's Gates from deep, a little short. Four minutes to play here in the second quarter. Celtics with a 43-36 lead on the net. Here's Williams. Backing down his man, surveying the scene, finds Begarin in the corner. There's his first miss of the day. Great extra pass, Donovan Williams. This is his floor. He played at UNLV. He knows all the angles on the court. Well, and what a pass. I mean, a great job of getting two feet in the paint, of forcing the defense to collapse. I mean, watch this. Gray, such a good job of attacking the D. You got the little stunt by Davidson. Close out not quick enough. It's tough when the ball gets to the middle of the floor and one-on-one -on -one defense so difficult when you've got so many tremendous offensive players. Especially got big men who can pass the yes. ball too. Can handle it, can see the floor. That out of bounds, that one will stay with the Celtics. Six on the shot clock. Hey, Stay home, Stay down. Hey. Is that a good one? A lot of talking going on, love to hear that. Silent Jim's a losing Jim. <laughs> Jackson curling off the rim, but Gray hit it while it was still on the cylinder. The basketball count. He didn't need to. It was coming off. It was coming off, and you see him. He's, he says, my bad. Just a little over anxious. Yeah, that was coming off. 
The Celtics with a six-point lead as we approach six minutes to play here in the second. Edwards, I mean, you're not blocking his jump shot. That is no, for sure. No, He's going to get it off. He's got great elevation. He's got that high release. Davison. Aubrey Dawkins, nothing but net. The product out of UCF when undrafted in 2019. He's played all over the world in Germany, Turkey, and the G League. He's trying to stick here. Middle in the lane. Nice cut by Edwards. Love those backside slash cuts. They're going to be open. You have players who can make that pass. Get the easy two. Davidson attacking, a little too strong. Tipped around, Gray will pull it down for the Nets. Who's going to make the last push here in the second quarter? Touch pass. There are some fun battles going on inside. Neither team wants to leave Vegas with an L. Well, look, coming out of the two-man game, hits the riser behind. Good vision, good poise. fifth and final game of the Summer League for both these squads. The Celtics come in at 3-1, and one, Brooklyn 2-2. Two and two. It's been a really high-level first half of basketball. Both teams have been efficient with the basketball in their hands. Both teams have made runs and answered runs. So critical, too, because if you're not going to stick with your club here, there's still a lot of eyes on you. You could land somewhere around Europe, somewhere in the world. So this is your last audition here at the Summer League. Second personal foul on Raekwon Gray. For the Celtics will take it out. Two minutes to play here in the second quarter. Celtics are shooting 50% from downtown, 8 of 16. Look at the scoop shot go for Justin Jackson. When you get good shots, when you share the basketball, when you get two feet in the paint, when you force defensive rotations, getting teammates open shots. We talked about their system-made field goal numbers, but they're also taking care of the basketball. Three turnovers, giving themselves opportunities offensively. Cam Thomas picks up his dribble and a defensive three seconds call. So Cam Thomas will go to the line to shoot the tech. Monica McNutt called him Mr. Summer League. <laughs> Leading scorer the past two summers. And you can see the things that he's working on, trying to take his name game to the next level. Every time he gets the ball in his hand, you see his eyes just darting all over the court, surveying the field, trying to figure out who's open, where do I want to go with it. It's not all about scoring this summer. Well, he's been a scorer. He knows how to do that. And good teams and good players know how to take away that strength or at least minimize that strength. How do you continue to get better? How do you grow your game? How do you show that you're ready to get into the rotation, to play meaningful minutes? Now, those are the ways that, that you do it. And he's done a really good job today of being a facilitator. Oh, Davison initiated the contact. And he'll be called for the offensive foul. This is a good job of getting back in the play and taking the contact. Right there, that's that's a young player in, in Davidson. You know, the, the timing of when to make that pocket pass on the roll or when to pull that jump shot when you engage the big. That's part of that growth process. Sharp. That out of bounds will stay here with the Nets under a minute to play here in the second quarter. Six seconds on the shot clock. Great inbound for the Nets. We'll find Thomas. Looks at the shot clock. It's at four. Have to go to work. Pump fake. Turnaround jumper. That's a tough shot. Really good D by Jackson. That's great D. You know he's going to shoot that fadeaway, try to elevate over. And such a good job of getting into his space by Jackson and using his length. How about Jackson? First round pick in 2017 out of North Carolina. He's played in over 250 NBA games 
Is he a guy who has shown enough to work his way back into the NBA this summer? No, I think he's a guy who continues to be in the conversation because of what he's shown. You know, was not here with the team in that first matchup, spent some time with his family after, after playing in the World Cup. Um, but, but a great opportunity for him to continue to show what he can do. Gates thought about the three, puts it on the floor. And he will be fouled and go to the line. I mean, the way the Celtics are shooting right now, 50% from the floor, 50% from three. They're just getting every good look, and they're knocking them down. Well, they're being very intentional with what they're doing on the offensive end of the floor. Pace, poise, understanding what they're looking for, making the extra pass. And you get high percentage looks when you play like that. All the off-ball cuts, all the dribble penetration, getting two feet in the paint. That gets teammates open. So Davidson will walk it up the floor. Under 30 seconds of play here in this first half. Ten on the shot clock. Davis inside to go. Double team. Jackson all alone. Shot clock turned off. Ten on the game clock. Here comes Duke. Just throws it up. And he is bailed out. What makes him so hard to stop in transition? Well, number one, he's so fast. I mean, you can't teach that that quickness, but quickness with the ball and body control. I mean, he has his eye on the rim. He understands where the defenders are. He doesn't get too rushed with that quickness. Nails that first free throw. Now he is in double figures and leading the way for the Nets. He's got 10 points. Makes them both. So 7.1 to play. Davison crosses midcourt. Three seconds. Man down. Cabin Gelly at the horn. That'll do it for the first half. The Celtics with a 52 to 46 lead for the Nets. David Duke leading the way. 11 points, four assists for the Celtics. The man out of Paris. Suan Vagarin at 14 points, three rebounds, two assists, and three steals. Filling it up. Celtics looking good in the first half here in Vegas. What's up, everybody? Welcome back courtside. John Trippin alongside my partner, Stephanie White and Monica McNutt. All right, Stephanie, so this, the Nets led by one at the end of the first quarter. The Celtics went on a run. They have a six-point lead at the end of the first half. What did you think of that first half? I thought it was a pretty clean first half. I thought both teams shared the basketball. Both teams really good on the defensive end of the floor. Overall, it was it was the cleanest game I've seen so far since I've been here. You can tell there's the intensity. Both teams want to leave with a W. The Celtics are 3-1. and one. The Nets are 2-2 two and two here into this fifth game. Let's take a look at some of the highlights here in that first half. Well, Bagarin was terrific in that first half. And his body control, his ability to knock down shots, to get to the rim. You see him knocking down the three, attacking the paint, getting the and one. He's got three steals to go along with his 14 points. And David Duke Jr. has been sensational on the open floor. Look at the way he just bursts. The change of speed, attacking the hip of the defender, going right at them. And the finish over the top of Kevin Gelly. Mm, David Duke Jr. Yeah, you can smile after that first half <laughs> performance. He put on a show. And when he comes downhill in transition, it is real fun to watch. It is. He just understands the angles. He understands how to attack the defender. He doesn't try to go around the defender. He goes right through them. All right, we're getting set for the start of the third quarter. Celtics with a six-point lead. Zuan Bagarin. Has been really effective from the floor. He started out a perfect five of five from the floor, finished five of seven with 14 points in that first half. As the Celtics will start with the ball here in this third quarter. Now we do have a treat here in the third quarter. We do have Nets Summer League head coach Adam Caporn, who is wired up, has a mic on, he can hear us. Adam, you got us? 
I've got you guys. What's going on? Okay. What did you tell your team at the half? I thought our effort was pretty good. Our intent was good. A lot of minor errors on defense that led to three. Good defender, three point one better. But they'll pick and roll and a little bit of just no one personnel. I also think. Good job, Kess. We clean some of those up. We can get a bit more pace in the game. And I thought uh, when we got that, opportunities like this, it's good for us. There's Edwards rising up, knocking down another three. We've been really impressed with the play of David Duke Jr. In transition, his speed burst, his eyes. What has impressed you with the way Duke has played today? I think Duke's had a great time around. Worked really hard. Uh, in the summer so far, and just getting better and better. But yeah, plays both sides of the ball. Really impressive tournament. One of the other things job, been, we've been talking about is, is Cam Thomas, and we know he has the ability to fill it up, but doing a very good job of facilitating here today. Is that something you've talked to him about or something that is a next step of growth for him? You got it. Yeah, go ahead. Um, absolutely. It's not It's not something that uh, we're pressing with him. It's just like every player is trying to grow their game and make better and better decisions. Cam has really passed the ball well. I think other guys need to help find him at times too. Um, he's been really committed to improving all areas of his game. I've been really impressed with his defense his improvement across the tournament too. With this fifth game, what's the emphasis and the stress for the next squad here in this last game of the Summer League? Sorry, can you say that one more time? With this last game here in the Summer League, what's been the emphasis in terms of what you're pre pre preaching to your guys? Oh, we're just trying to really be committed to establishing our identity and then Nets culture. Um, playing with an edge is our thing. We're trying to fight and play together uh, all 40 minutes um, and finishing out in the fifth game. A good performance. I'm trying to stay consistent with those things. Really committed to defensive ends. And it's got to be a foul. And, and coach, it's also a, a growing experience for you on the sidelines. What are some of the things that, that you're, you're learning and getting out of this experience? That it's hard to do an interview and coach at the same time. Uh, <laughs> No, it's been a great experience, really. I think the players have been super coachable. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of things. Okay, how about this? Can you tell us maybe defensively or when you guys are on offense, kind of what you guys are running and maybe talk through the play with us? We're trying to um, have a bit of variety in our offense. We're running some pick and rolls, as you can see, and some off ball screening. Our thing at the moment is trying to have uh, five players in motion. We try not to stand, which we don't always do a great job of, but we're still learning and, and trying some of those things in our system that we can uh, improve and learn from a coaching perspective as well. Some nuances okay. that we can bring to next season. All right, so we're going to stay with you for one more offensive possession and let you talk us through the, when you guys have the ball. Stay down. Sounds good. You good, Kent? Way to pass it, fellas. Yeah, two. What worked there offensively? Under that! Under that! All right, guys, thanks for your time. Okay. Adam Caporn, Summer League head coach for the Brooklyn Nets. Really appreciate it. He's like, get this thing off me. I need to coach a ball game. <laughs> He's like, I'm trying to win this game. Enough of this interview. <laughs> We do appreciate Adam putting on the headset for us. That was fun. He brought up a good point, right? Like, this is not just for the players. This is an experience for everybody out here. Coaches are getting the head seat now. You have officials who are on the floor in key situations. Everyone's trying to learn and get better here. You get assistant coaches who, who get to move to the to the front of the bench or, or video coordinators who, who get opportunities. Um, but, but you hear them talking about the ball movement, and, and this is a prime example of it. Could have had one shot, two shots, pass them up, get the second defender to commit, deliver it on time, on target. But I think it's intriguing, too, to, to just listen to coaches talk on the sideline. Because we talk so much about what players are saying on the floor and, and having the communication. But coaches are over there on the sideline, too, talking about, you know, extra pass, get down, get in the stance, rotate, you know, set, set the screen, roll to the rim, rise, all of those things that, that coaches are talking about, trying to talk their players through it. I tried to stop asking him too many questions because you could tell he was really locked in, right? Like, but that's the best yeah. part when you can hear him just kind of calling out directions from the bench and interacting with his players out there on the floor. Kick ball by Duke, and we'll stay with the, with the Celtics. 
Yeah, I would imagine that would be tough to do a live interview while you're trying to coach your team. <laughs> Did you ever have it's to not do that? In, no, no not, in, not in live action. In the break. Well, you would have said yes to the interview, right? Oh, of course, yeah. yeah. I never say no. <laughs> Tie ball game, 59 apiece here. Under seven minutes to play in this third quarter. Oh, what a nice. pass by Williams. No look to Begarin. And he will be fouled. I mean, we've talked about that. Travion Williams at 6'10", his size, he has such great vision. He, he does, and he, he really is a, a point guard mentality in, in a post player body. I mean, he, he does. He gets more satisfaction from the assists. He sees the floor incredibly well. He loves it when he can back down a defender and, and see that help side and deliver a pass. Begarin from straight on. Gray with a full head of steam. He misses with the lefty. And McGarren will walk with it as he got his own board. So we had a really clean game. It's gotten a little sloppy here. Is it just a sense of guys trying to push? They know they just have one half left of basketball in the summer. Yeah, I think it could be a combination of things. You know, certainly there could be a little bit of a fatigue factor. Um, you know, certainly players are seem to be affected when the ball doesn't go through the net as much as it, as it was early. But I, I love the fact that, that we're getting so much player movement on the offensive end of the floor. When we saw in the first quarter, Brooklyn turned it up on the defensive end, and I think we're going to have to see a defensive push leading out into the break, because right now, it's a lot of half court, a lot of grind it out. Williams no good on the hook, Sharp with the rebound. I think all teams are at their best when they're pushing pace, when they're playing in the open floor. Every time Edward shoots, I think it's going in. Davison with a speed burst all the way to the bucket. I love how when he elevates, he elevates up to the rim and not out away from the rim. A lot of young players you see, they stride out instead of elevate up, and, and he finishes high. Time out on the floor. Celtics with a two-point lead, 5.06 to play here in the third quarter. Come on back to Vegas after this quick break. And ESPNU, don't forget about the ESPN app. First on ESPN, we got the championship game. Portland taking on New York. That's for the chip and a Summer League Championship ring. That starts at 3 p.m. Eastern. Then on ESPN, you got Phoenix, Indiana at 5.30. And on ESPN2, Washington, Golden State at 7.30 Eastern. Who you like in the championship game? Wow. <laughs> Portland, New York. That's a tough one. That's a, you know, I like the way New York is playing. You know, I, I think they're playing incredibly well. I think Quinn Grimes is playing some of the best basketball. So I'm going to go New York. Okay. All right. What about you? Who you got? I, I mean, I am originally from New York City, and the fact oh. that New York basically brought their entire squad, <laughs> <laughs> I kind of got to roll with the Knicks on that one. Yeah, I mean, you got to feel some success, right? Thomas punched away by Williams. Garen in transition will find Reeves. Williams will pull down the offensive rebound. Reeves lose the handle, turnover. Last time Brooklyn led, they had a one-point lead at the end of the first quarter. Thomas hanging. Tie ball game. I think you're going to see more of that from him in the second half. The first half did a really good job of facilitating. Now an opportunity will open up for him to get some shots. Thomas is 4 of 11 from the floor. He's got nine now. Davison finds the open man, Williams. That's a shot that big men are now being asked to knock down. Thomas! Oh, it's go time for him. Now. What a finish! <laughs> Dawkins from the corner. Tipped around. Another offensive rebound by Williams. And that's what he can do. You know, he, he's a guy who can, who can bring you energy. He can rebound the basketball. He can make hustle plays. We've seen his ability to facilitate. And to your point, you can tell he takes pride in doing the dirty work, right? Like, he loves the offensive glass. He loves getting his teammates involved. Alondis Williams, hesitation, nice dump off the sharp. Two 
two on the shot clock. Got to get it up. Sharp at the buzzer. Now Williams will call for it in the post with his back to the basket. Six on the shot clock for the Celtics. Turn around. Jumper off the window. Dawkins high in the air. And Edwards will be fouled on the board. Timeout on the floor. We got a tie ball game here in the third quarter. We talked about it. It's Cam Thomas time. Facilitating in the first half. Looking for his in the second half. Gets to the rim. And look at this high finish over the defender. Cox Pavilion to give you a live look in on Sacramento taking on Houston. Both teams with a 2-2 two and two record also playing their fifth and final game. You see Sacramento with an early 9-3 lead in the first quarter. Duke at the rim. Well, how good has Keegan Murray been? I mean, it, he's special. I mean, probably the best player of the summer, yes, right? Best player of the summer. His poise, his control. His ability to, to not get sped up and to continue to play his game, his efficiency. I mean, I just love his demeanor. Calm, cool, collected. <laughs> he lets his game do the talking. Yeah, you can't tell if, if he just made a shot, missed a shot. Great in our game. We got tie game here, 63 all against Boston and Brooklyn. Sacramento trying to make a statement. Win their third game here in the summer. All right, two minutes left here in this third quarter. From what you've seen, has there somebody who maybe was kind of under the radar who has maybe caught your eye this game? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know about under the radar. You know, I, I think that we've seen the guys who have, have been consistent throughout the course of, of these, you know, four and now five games play consistent, continue to play consistently. Mm -hmm. Gray in the lane. I think right now in this third quarter, it's just been sloppy basketball turnovers, you know, not getting quite the quality of shots that were, were got in the first half. Pick and roll back to Kevin Kelly. Ho oh, ho! He thought it was a lot of contact. He was looking for the foul. Here come the Nets in the breakout. This is Williams down the three. For the Nets, this is their largest lead of the ball game, up by four. Kevin Galley calling for it. He'll be fouled underneath by Donovan Williams. And that's a good foul. There wasn't anything he was going to do if he got the ball. <laughs> Take a foul. Garen curling oh, nice. by Kevin Kelly all alone. What a run, what a play. Out of bounds. Kevin Kelly just does such a good job of finding the open seam on those cuts, on those dives, on his rolls. There's Duke again for two more. Duke, he leads the way. He's got 17 points now, six of 10 from the floor. So Williams thought that they had a foul to give. The bench was telling them to give a foul, but they actually are, did not have a foul to give, and that'll send Bone to the line. But that also goes back to learning experience, right? Like everybody got it in situational basketball, last minute of the quarter. These are the situations you got to learn from. No doubt about it. And, and there are so many of those situations within a game. After timeouts, you know, end of quarters, end of ball games, two for ones. I mean, there are so many 
situational plays in the game, and you really have to be a student of the game. The bench has to be communicating it, and there goes David Duke Jr. again. He now has 20 on the game. Here's McGarren right back at him. Gets his tough two to go. 30 seconds to play in this third quarter. And that's one of those quick drivings, you know, potential two-for-one opportunities. And we're talking about a 19-year-old, right, who, who's been playing overseas, who's been studying game film with this Boston Celtics coaching staff, recognizing that moment. Duke will step into one a little short on the three. Shot clock turned off 10 seconds to go here in this third quarter. Bone, in and out dribble. Looks up at the clock, it's at four. Got some space on the defender, tries to dump it off. And they won't get a shot off here to end the third. Brooklyn with a three-point lead over the Celtics at the end of three quarters. David Duke Jr. pouring it on. 20 points, leading all scores. I'm looking for Beyond the fourth quarter, three-point ball game, what will be the focus so that you guys come out with the win? Uh, contain the paint, the really good drivers. You know, make them shoot more threes than get into the paint. So if you control the paint on defense and transition, we'll be okay. Offensively, what do you guys need to do? Uh, move the ball, get it, get it to both sides, make the defense shift so they make more mistakes. Thank you, Beyond. No problem. All right, Monica, appreciate that. Brooklyn starts off with a bucket here to start this fourth quarter. You know what I took away from that interview? Kevin Gelly is out of breath. These guys are going <laughs> hard right now. This is going to be a fun fourth quarter here. Bone playing the pick and roll with Kevin Gelly, but he took a step before he put it on the ground. Travel. So Brooklyn outscored Boston 26 to 17 in that third quarter. And you heard Kevin Gelly talking about picking up the defensive intensity, getting too many open looks. And keeping them out of the paint. Right. I mean, again, we, we talked about when the ball gets side to side, when you get two feet in the paint, offensively good things happen. One-on-one -on -one containment is so difficult in the NBA. When you have great scoring players, players who can, who can get by you, got to get in the gap. So Dawkins called with that personal foul. That's just his second. Ten personal fouls you get here in the summer, lady. <laughs> would you crazy. would you have used every one of those? Oh my gosh, yes. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I didn't play any defense, so. <laughs> Thomas from deep. Five point lead for the Nets here. And, and this is you heard Kevin Gillies also talk about moving the basketball. All right, look at the shot clock, 12 seconds left, and the ball touched two people's hands. That's not what we saw in the first half. We saw the ball moving side to side, multiple players touching it, and open high percentage looks. So from young point guard J.D. Davison, you want him to kind of give it up earlier in the shot clock and then potentially get it back? Or make a quicker decision. I mean, you know, you can't, you can't take so much time dribbling the ball. Either you're going to attack right away, and, and you're going to find the open player or get to the rim or get the ball moving and get into offensive flow. High ball screen by Sharp. Thomas keeps his dribble alive. There's the high floater. That shot is so effective. He's so good at that. Again, the, the body control, his ability to elevate the touch around the rim. Dawkins three is short. Here's Duke on the board. Seven-point lead for the Nets. In transition, Kevin Galey. That's a goal, 10. So the Nets, with their largest lead of the ball game, forced the Celtics to call a timeout under nine minutes to play here in this fourth quarter. We'll be back. Jones and the Sun, two of the top four teams in the WNBA are set to square off tomorrow, 1 Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, on ABC and the ESPN app. All right, as someone who lives here in Las Vegas, I get to see the Aces all the time. I'm going to put it out there. I think the Aces win the title this year. They should. I mean, you know, <laughs> this is a, it's a team that's been on the brink. Um, but, but they haven't had the experience, right? They haven't had the experience. Now they do. Becky Hammond's system fits these players perfectly. You, know, you have Asia Wilson playing at an all-star level and an MVP level. Kelsey Plum playing mm. at an MVP level. Yep. And what great ambassadors they are for the, the game of basketball, yes. right? Like Kelsey yes. Plum and Asia Wilson leading the Aces, new franchise here in Vegas. I mean, it has been great to see the work that they do, especially here in the community in Las Vegas. 
It really is, and you know that's that's one staple of, of the W. And, and um, I'm sure you see it um, here as you, you being somebody who lives here. You you see it. They are out in the community all the time. The W has always been a grassroots type of type of um of a program. And, and I'm excited for Becky Hammond. It's it's great to have her back in the W. 100 percent. 100%. An incredible opportunity. I mean, she has worked so hard her yes. entire career, now being the head coach of the Aces. Bring home the championship to Las <laughs> Vegas. Let's go. Aces currently in second place right now in the WNBA behind Chicago. Just a game back. Duke curling off the inbound. So Williams now directing traffic. Ten on the shot clock for the Celtics. Big Aaron with some space. Ooh -hoo -hoo -hoo. The 19-year-old from Paris just pouring it on today. He's got 19 now. Now if you're Boston, you got to find a way to get some stops. Again, defending that paint, forcing shots like that. That's good defense, better offense. Kessler Edwards. Entering his second year out of Pepperdine. We haven't seen Kessler Edwards put the ball on the floor that much, but that one dribble pull up, the way he can elevate in that high release, that's a tough one to stop. Fighting for the rebound, it's going to be Celtics ball. All right, eight point game, Celtics down. Let's first take the replay of his last three by the Celtics. Oh, he just sizes up the defender right there. Gray backs off and knocking down the three. You recognize that if you're Bagarin. You recognize and, and, and you, you see he's backing off. I'm going to take that thing. Williams will initiate the offense, backing down his man, tipping it up at the rim, and he will be fouled. Nets wanted a goaltend, but they called a foul instead. They thought offensive goaltend there. It was close. Yeah, yeah. You know, ever since you made that point about J.D. Davis and not initiate the offense fast enough, they've been working the offense through Williams, and he's been the facilitator, and it's been working for the Celtics. And, and they're really looking to get that, that dive and the DHO on the backside. Brooklyn is doing a really good job of taking away that dive action, so they're not getting anything to the rim playing off of the DHO, but Williams is a good guy to play in that trail position because he is such a good decision maker and facilitator. So the lead is cut to six now with seven minutes to play here in this ball game. Get the sense it's Cam Thomas time. Floater no good. And in transition, Williams will give up the foul on Bone. There they go again, working the offense to Williams. Oh, look at the fake, goes reverse. And Davidson cleans it up. The big man, Travion Williams, showing he's got some moves. Gates extra pass to Edwards, misses everything. Celtics down by four now. Davidson to the cup. And a jump ball. Good D. Great job by Gates of getting a hand in there. Uh, I mean, this is tough because Davidson going downhill, cradles the ball. Gates able to get a hand in there and keep it on there. I mean, J.D. Davidson is almost flirting with a triple-double right now. He's got 11 points, 9 assists, and 6 rebounds. I mean, you think about all the guys in the second round, whoever people consider who could be a steal, who's the guy that people got away with. J.D. Davison, at the 53rd pick in this last draft, he could be the steal right now. I think you're absolutely right. No, I, I've, just, I've been really impressed just with his, his, his poise and his composure, his decision-making, when to attack, when to facilitate.
Celtics ball down by four here. 6-13 to play in this fourth quarter. Davison crossing over his man. Bone will step into a three. Didn't get the shot, but you like that offensive yeah, possession. Yeah, good offense. Recognize the switch, attack, draw two. Here's Bone now with the steal. Finishes at the rim. Jordan Bone, second round pick in 2019 out of Tennessee. He's played in the G League. He's played in Spain. Trying to stick around. And Boston picking up the defensive intensity, on ball defense, defensive pressure. Edwards for deep, knocks down another three. That's a tough one because Bagarin was in the gap to help take away the driving lane, but you can't be that far off of Edwards. You have to be in the gap, but still understand how you can get back quick enough to contest. For Edwards, that's his third three of the game. He now has 15 on the game. Reeves will rise up. Five-point lead for the Nets as Cam Thomas bringing it up. 13 points, 6 of 15 from the floor. It will get all the way to the rim. And one, Cam Thomas. In eight summer league games, dating back to his first summer league last year, he's averaging almost 28 points a game. Well, he's explosive. And just such a good job right there of, of recognizing the miscommunication on the switch. And that's a tough defensive play when you're used to switching those on ball screens on that slip out. You got to communicate who's going to stay on the ball, who's going to go with the slip. Garen gets it and he just goes. Gets his own rebound. That one blocked by Edwards. Thomas breaking down his man, gets all the way to the bucket. Too Cam much space. Thomas, he now has 16. Too much space. Excuse me, 18. Eight nothing run right now by the Nets. Open up a 10 point lead. And put Karen, talk about too much space. <laughs> he took the rhythm dribble. And Gates closed the gap on that, shot right over the top of him. But Garrett's now the leading scorer for the Celtics. He's got 22. Thomas, no good. Celtics looking to run in transition. Davison dribbling with his head up. He'll find Jackson in the corner. Thomas will leave it for Williams. And one. Donovan Williams, the rookie out of UNLV. Good run in transition. Cam Thomas finds him streaking. And this is two possessions where Boston has fouled and given and one opportunities on drives to the rim. You got to be in position to contest that, or you got to foul somebody and not let him get the shot up. Donovan Williams, a good performance in his final summer league game here in Vegas. With that free throw, he now has nine points on the game. Three of four from the field. He's got the home court bounce on the rim right there. <laughs> Getting the love. Yes, Cass! Yes, Cass! Yeah! Oh! McGarren with the extra step. Oh! And one off the glass. He's been impressive. Really has. Uh, um, his his decision making, you know, his poise, his body control. I mean, again, we're talking about a 19-year-old. Finishes with contact, fading away off the glass. And he converts the three-point play. So Begarin now leads all scorers. He's got 25 on the night. Nine of 16 from the floor. Wouldn't be able to tell looking at his face. He is just <laughs> calm, no emotion. It's all business right now. Duke, extra step. Heads up, quick! Back! We're back! Roll them! Roll them! 
Quick shot by Davison. You like that shot? No, I think that's one he, he wants to have back. That's one of those decision-making plays. Now, there's a lot of time left in this ball game. Get the ball moving, get a high percentage look, or attack. If you like the mismatch, attack, get your advantage. When is it okay to take a quick three like that? When it's an open one. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas trying to break down his man, uses the screen, now feels the contact. He is just so crafty when he gets in the lane. He is, and the way that he uses his body, gets into the defender, severs the angle, takes away the space. So Thomas, who has 18 points on the game, will go to the line to shoot two. And he makes the first. Coming up next, our NBA 2K23 Summer League quadruple header is capped off by the Lakers and the Mavericks. Now you can also watch it on the ESPN app. Anytime the Lakers take the court here in Vegas, there are tons of fans here at Thomas and Mack. The Lakers fans, they travel well. They do travel well. Under three minutes to play here in this fourth quarter. Nine-point lead for the Nets. Davison finds Kevin Kelly. Good look. Another assist for Davison. And a great decision in delivery. Davison now has a double-double, 11 points, 10 assists, and he's sitting on six rebounds. He's got to get to the defensive glass. Good Duke hands. Stripped away. Davison out ahead of the pack. Oh! He said no lay-ins <laughs> here. Davison now has 13 points. Crossover by Gray. Couldn't finish. I did not see the contact there. Uh, I didn't there. either. I thought he lost it. Possession before, Kevin Gelly had done such a good job of getting his hand in there, leading to this J.D. Davidson fast break opportunity. Throws it down. Boston closing the gap. NBA 2K in Las Vegas for the two NBA 2K23 Summer League. John Schriffen, Stephanie White, and Monica McNutt on the call. 2.14 to play. Nets with a five-point lead. I think the Celtics have a little run in them left. I think so. No reason to, to leave anything in the tank. Certainly have an opportunity right here. Got to tighten it up on the defensive end. Got to stop fouling. Brooklyn with 19 free throw attempts. The Nets 18 of 19 from the free throw line. They are making them count. Duke trying to get over the screen was called for the foul on the Nets. Duke leading the way. He's got 22. Cam Thomas has got 20. And Thomas's 20 is pretty quiet because that entire first half, he was just trying to be the facilitator. Oh, I believe he's got 15 in the second half. Yeah. Dawkins on the offensive glass. And that's what you got to do. You know, give, give yourself multiple opportunities, turn it up on the defensive end. Under two minutes to play, five-point lead for the Nets. Thomas will use the screen. Turn around at the elbow. Oh, that is just pretty. <laughs> I, I like the adjustment to put Jackson on him to use that length, but that is just too good offensively for Cam Thomas. Kevin Galli not ready for the pass. He was able to save it for the Celtics. McGarren looks at the shot clock. It's at 10. He'll pull him from deep, a little short. In crunch time, it is all Cam Thomas for the Nets. 1-10 to play. Ball is in Thomas's hands. Looks like they run back to that same play. Got double team, split the defense. I mean, it's just silly now. Camp Thomas doing whatever he wants to do. Davison, scoop shot, finishes off for two more. He's got 15. The thing that makes Cam Thomas so tough to guard in that two-man is he doesn't get rushed. You see the double, so they change it up on him, right? The double comes, and he stays poised, he stays controlled, he spins out of it, and he makes a play. 
Nets content with running the clock. Shot clock down to five. Now Duke's going to go out the rim. Kevin Gelly walled up, but Duke finished. That is so smooth. Davison with the Euro step, two more. 31.3 to play. Celtics will pick up full court press. And Duke will be fouled and go back to the line. No, excuse me. Boston had one foul to give. The Celtics down by seven, deciding not to foul. The Dawkins actually will give the foul, being aggressive on D. And that will send the Nets to the line. Thomas' first miss from the free throw line. He is four of five from the line now. 24.5 to play. Celtics just hoping for a chance. So that was a shot clock. Just had to adjust it, make sure the shot clock's at 24. Thomas getting set for the second free throw. One of two from the line. Wow. Cam Thomas just got teed up. Well, he was jawing in between shots with, with somebody on the Celtics bench. And then afterward, letting him know. I think we might be getting Cam Thomas at the table at the end of this game. We might have to ask him about that one. So it looks like his day is done and finished with 26 points, 15 here in this fourth quarter. Dawkins pump fake, pull from three. Duke with the shot clock turned off. He's just going to dribble this one out for the Nets. A strong performance, winning their fifth and final game here in Las Vegas. The Nets move to 3-2 and two here in Vegas with a 102-94 win over the Celtics. Camp Thomas leading the way for the Nets. 25 points, 6 assists. Well, and you mentioned it, a lot of uh, second time guys here in this summer league had big club experience started out slow but found their rhythm and were able to come out with the victory the nets had a one point lead after the first quarter the celtics made a run in that second but then the nets they found a way to just keep pouring it on their second year guys were so effective here in this win david duke jr he had another strong performance 24 points five rebounds five assists Kessler Edwards also had a very strong game, 15 points. He was three of four from deep. So a strong shooting performance for the second year guys for the Brooklyn Nets. All right, we are joined by the player of the game for the Nets. Cam Thomas, Cam, an impressive fifth and final win here in Vegas for the Nets. What was your mentality? Because it was very different first half versus the second half for you. Yeah, I just wanted to get my teammates involved. Um, the way that Boston was playing, they wanted to pack it in on me, make me pass out to my players. So I was trying to take advantage of that. And then second half, it opened up for me to go into the paint, into the mid-range, get to the line, get to the layup. So, you know, I, just, I was reading the game, playing the game. Game started out slow for you guys offensively. Mm -hmm. 
Coach calls timeout. Seemed like defensive intensity uh, picked up. What was the difference? Uh, we started talking more. Um, of course, we brought the energy. You know, we all started out sluggish. You know, fifth, final, fifth and final game, everybody a little sluggish. So we just wanted to keep it going, keep playing. So, you know, I'm glad we count with a win on our final game. This is your second summer league. First summer league, you're a co-MVP. What do you want to work on this summer here in Vegas? Yeah, I just wanted to keep working on my game, become an all-around player. Um, you know, just do whatever my coach wanted me to, um, you know, do in the offseason. So, and just show it out here. And I feel like I did that in all five games. So, you know, just can't wait till the season starts. All right, we got a highlight package. Let's take a look at some of your highlights from the game today. It was impressive because the first half, he was you were the facilitator. You were getting everybody involved. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then in the second half, it was go time. Oh, you had to be. It's winning time. <laughs> yeah. Tell us what you're seeing there as you're breaking down the defense. Yeah, I'm just reading the, um, just reading the low man. Um, they're all trying to trap me, double team, get the ball in my hands on the pick and roll. So I just wanted to um, read as best as I can. So like, as soon as the big came up, I knew the other way would be wide over. So I just try to like, lose my, use my speed and quickness against the bigs, double teaming me. With, with a lot of your second year guys here, everyone's playing here in the summer, which guy do you feel like made some big strides as well here in Vegas? Uh, really, all our second guy, second year guys on our team, really, uh, especially David Duke. Uh, he played real well in every game this, this year. Kessler, Dayron, uh, Raekwon Gray. Really, everybody on that team played well that got minutes. So I'm proud of my team. I'm proud that we all we all got along. And I'm proud just, you know, just to share the court with those guys because they was all good good people on and off the floor. So I'm just happy, you know, we came out with a 3-2 and two record this week. I appreciate that. Cam Thomas, player of the game for the Brooklyn Nets. Really appreciate you spending some time. We have another guy, David Duke Jr., who also had a very good game. Let's take a look at some of his highlights as he had 24 points in the win for the Brooklyn Nets. David Duke Jr. poured it on. And in transition was where he really went. Stephanie, when he came to the ball, I mean, he would not be denied. Such a good job getting downhill, attacking the paint. All right, and standing by with David Duke Jr. Let's send it to Monica McNutt. All right, David. So, yes, you guys get the win, but I got to go back to the dunk in the first half, second quarter, I think. When you attack the rim, what are you looking for? Uh, first look is always a score, you know, and then based on what the defense takes away, that's my read. But, you know, a couple other times I try to pass it off and, it didn't really work out, but I realized the big was in a big drop, so I was like, you know, next time I'm going to get him. It's the last one in the fourth quarter, too, I was going to get him, but he jumped too early, so I let him know I spared him on that one. Beyond your dunking ability, through the course of Summer League, you've shown an ability to contort your body and finish at the rim. Is that something you take a lot of pride in when it comes to your game? I mean, that's just, you know, finishing with something that coming into this offseason, you know, I made sure it was a priority to work on. Um, credit to the coaching staff. You know, they've done a great job. I've been with them probably the past, like, couple months. Um, really just working a lot around the rim uh, as well as shooting, you know, just uh, basically the all-around game. At the end of the day, you know, bringing intensity. Uh, but, yeah, you know, like I said, credit to them. That's something that we worked on. You've had opportunities with the big club. Why was it important for you to go out here and perform well, though, as well? Uh, you know, just to show what I've been working on. Like I said, I've been with them the past couple months, putting in a lot of work. Um, so, you know, coming out here, being able to, you know, put it to work, put it to the test, see how, you know, I'm improving. It was a big thing for me to show them, you know, how I can contribute, um, you know, with the Brooklyn team. I think you showed them, David. Congratulations. I appreciate you. Thank you. All right, Monica, appreciate that. Once again, our final score, Nets win 102-95, taking the court. Los Angeles Lakers coming up next against the Dallas Mavericks. The Mavericks 0-4, looking for their first win here in the summer for the Lakers. They got some star power on the court. We're going to see Scotty Pippen Jr. on the court. Sharif O'Neal. Let's close it up from this one. Our leading scorer, Camp Thomas, had 25. David Duke, my goodness, he had 24. Kevin Gelly had another strong performance. Zuan Bagarin, he led the way for the Celtics with 25. But the Nets finish off the summer with a 102-95 win. Lakers and Mavericks coming up next.